Welcome back to the Pulse with Willie and Al. How's it going today, brother? Not too bad. Not too bad. It's uh, you know Tuesday morning here, and uh, it's it's sunny. It's a little warm. I'll take it. Yeah. yeah. Well, we are finally starting to get fall here, which is really nice. It's been hot as hell recently, uh, but this week, uh, after this previous week of rain, uh, weekend of rain rather, it's uh, it's cooled off quite a bit. So very refreshing, very nice to be around and, and be outside um but you'll remember new england we're experiencing what is the second summer right now yeah the, uh that little summer at the end right before fall where you're like boy fall temperatures were a thing and then now it's 85 again <laughs> yeah very interesting so uh all right well guys we are back with episode 55 of the pulse uh this is our we are flying high episode and uh we are flying double high nickels today. Yeah, we're flying Double high today, nickels. baby. So uh, yeah. um, we are going to start off with some Major League Baseball uh, just to get things going because right now the wild card race can be described accurately as nuts, uh, especially in, in both leagues. And, I mean, listen, we've got, depending on the team, 11 or 12 games left. Uh, but it's one of the tightest races I can ever remember. Like, there's only six teams in baseball that have been eliminated from the playoffs. Yeah, that is wild. Now, I know there's going to be more in the coming days. It's going to happen. But that's kind of crazy. Now, one of the teams was out a long time ago, uh, and, and I think they were out in May. But uh... <laughs> hey, 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 Chicago White Sox on a three game winning streak right now. Hey, all right. That they is... have to go seven and five the rest of the way to avoid the record. Oh, man. I... It's not going to happen. Um, hey man, they're on a three game winning streak. I don't know what else you want from them. That's... Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think it's what I want, uh, but it's what the <laughs> fans want. Uh, but yeah, so uh, right now, like in, in the American League, you've got the Tigers and the Mariners are both vying for wild card spots. Uh, Tigers are one and a half games out where the Mariners are two, which it's wild. And I was talking to my dad about this. It's wild to be talking about the Tigers at this point uh in september yeah and, and saying hey like they they actually have a chance and in fact as of last week uh the braves were only a few games better than the tigers and it's kind of crazy to to think that they you know we think about the braves and we're like oh yeah really good team and stuff uh or at least had the the promises of a good team during the season you know uh that got wiped away because of some injuries but we think of them very differently, the Braves and the Tigers, uh, but very close together in terms of their opportunities to be able to make the playoffs here. So uh, yeah. what do you what are you seeing in the AL? What are you thinking and uh, how are you feeling about this? I really, I just like the Sox are four out. Um, their bullpen is um, it's garbage. It is hot, steaming garbage. <laughs> uh, we, we just played the Yankees recently where it was on full display how bad our bullpen was. Um, and I, I think that's ultimately going to cost us. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, too, with that, like I said, I, the Sox have played better than I ever could have imagined this year, considering I thought they were going to lose 100 games, and most everybody else did. Um, and they've got a really good farm system on the way, which is good. Uh, so, and I, I don't really take Seattle seriously, because, like, they're just kind of a mess. They don't really do for the lineup that they have, their starting pitching is Luis Castillo and, and dudes. Yeah. Like that's pretty much what it is. So like, I'm really kind of hoping for the Tigers just for your dad's sake. And also what's wild is that four out of the five, uh, AL central teams this year are good. Yeah. Which it's you also said, you also said at one point during the season, the season legally one team has to win this division. And, and now yeah. it's kind of awesome to see that all four teams are like in contention of it. Well, I say all four, but minus the White Sox, right? Yeah, uh, I, I mean Cleveland's five up right now for the division. Mm -hmm. I, I think they have that pretty much squared away. 
Uh, Because their bullpen, uh, they have Emmanuel Clase, who it looks like he's going to lead the league in saves again for the third straight year, which has never happened. Uh, His ERA, I think I read as of last night, was like .66. Like, he, I think he'll probably get some Cy Young love. I don't think he'll win it, but, like, I think he'll get some votes for Cy Young this year. Yeah, I mean, I just, I don't see, it's so tough being in a closer position and winning that award. Uh, it's yeah. it, it's kind of rough to be able to do it. Um, Hasn't happened since Eric Gagne in 03. So yeah, like, and he was a stud, man. Um, yeah. So uh, what about the NL? Uh, because <laughs> I mean, you've got you've got kind of this weird sort of uh, competition going on between the Braves and the Mets, where they're been within one to two games of each other for the last month. Uh, the Mets went on that what. 10 nine game winning streak tear to be able to yeah. catch up. Uh, and now it seems like they're kind of in the driver's seat and it's theirs to kind of lose. Uh, but you've also got the Padres and Diamondbacks. <laughs> All of these teams want in. Uh, one of these teams is not going to make it. And I really hope it's not my Braves, but uh, the Braves are one game out right now. They're the, they're the low man on the totem pole. Uh, the interesting thing about this is the Mets and Braves are going to play each other next week in a three game series. And that yeah. I feel like is going to be the determining factor of who gets in and who does not, uh, because they can't tie. So, um, yeah, I, I trust, I trust that the Mets are going to do Mets things and, and fuck this up. Somehow. <laughs> They're the Mets. They always, do. yeah, like, it could like, happen. I, I don't yeah. like how good they've been playing recently because it makes things really tough for, for Atlanta. Uh, but also, I could see the Padres, uh, well, maybe not the Padres, but the Diamondbacks kind of faltering here at the end. Um, and until the, the last two days where the Dodgers beat the Braves pretty handily in both games. Uh, yeah, they beat the brakes off of them. Yeah, I mean, the Braves won the first two games. And I was thinking like, oh, man, like the Dodgers are in trouble now. Uh, which the Dodgers might be in trouble come postseason because they just they have are. they have so many injuries on this squad. And that kind of leads me into the question I was going to ask you. You know, there's a mention of Otani. Well, it was kind of one of those things like don't hear what I'm not saying by yeah. Dave Roberts. But like Otani may pitch in the playoffs. And I'm just kind of curious your thoughts on that. That's dumb. Like you have all this money invested in this guy, like that's that's a that's a Dave Roberts is trying to save his job is what move is what that is. That's not a that's not a thinking ahead move because like Otani Otani had Tommy John surgery on on that elbow. Like mm-hmm. he's I don't think he's ready to pitch. Like just you can like fit you can piece it together. Like it just don't don't ruin Otani's arm for good because then like the reason you signed him to a $700 million contract is because he can pitch and hit. But like, if you're blowing out his elbow before he's ready to come back from Tommy John, then like you've, you've kind of ruined him. Well, let me ask you about that because uh, in, in my opinion, and again, this is, I feel like we've had this same conversation for a few years since we've been talking about the Dodgers in the postseason, but if the Dodgers don't win the World Series this year, uh, if they make it back to a World Series, I don't think they're firing Dave Roberts. But if they if they lose in the playoffs in the first round or even the second round, I could see them moving on from him. I I think honestly they they have to win the World Series. It's li- I think it's it's win or bust. For them. Really? Okay. I really do. I mean, this was the team that went all in in the offseason. The amount of money that they spent on high profile players, you know, Otani, Yamamoto, like dude, they they need to win. They really do. Like this team was built to win now. Um I know injuries are are uh, things that you can't predict, but and the the bets getting hit on the hand and being out for a couple months, like that was kind of an unforeseen thing. But this team was built with the idea that they were going to win the World Series this year, not next year, not the year after. This year, uh, yeah, kind of a tough thing. Uh, I I think you know I, second guess, really thinking this through. I guess like 
I think if they make it to the World Series, I think Roberts is okay. But like yeah. I I agree with you. I think if he gets they get swept in the first round again, like he's gone. Well, they better just I mean, they're not going to play for the Phillies in the first round, obviously, unless something drastic happens in these l- next week and a half. Uh yeah, they might. Yeah. Well, well, if if something crazy happens in the next week and a half and they don't win the division, then I could see that. But otherwise, they're not playing the Phillies in the first round. Uh, cause no. the Phillies are going to have the, the, you know, the division locked up. Um, I don't see the, the Bretts, uh, the Bretts, the Braves or the Mets going to, to be able to, uh, <laughs> to be able to take them out for that. Uh, but if somehow they falter down, down the line here at the end in these last 12 games and the Diamondbacks and Padres overtake them. And I mean, there's still an outside opportunity that they do not make the playoffs. I don't think that's going to happen. But no. uh, th- there's a chance that one of these teams that are hungry gets in and ends up beating them. And that's that 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 would be a really sad story and ending to a very sad year for for the Dodgers, in my opinion. The, the Dodgers have too good of a lineup to let that happen. Like ju- they're hitting alone. I won't won't let them have. I think they're going to win the division. I I, I really do. Um, but that's. They've won the division a million and a half times. and But you, you know, know what's crazy? Been. They could end up playing the Braves in the first round. And yes, they just beat the pants off them the last two days. But they also got, got beat up the first two games. So, like, yeah. I don't I don't know, man. Like, And that that's why I think the, the Braves match up better against them. But I don't know. The, the Mets getting it, maybe it'd be a good thing for the Braves to not make it. I hate saying that. Yeah. Let's cut well, that. I mean, we're cutting that. Yeah, we're not. We're not including that. <laughs> well, I think too. Like if that's you, you saying that means you're wasting our Chris Sale season. Yeah, which is a, re- a healthy Chris Sale. A, a, a very healthy Cy Young season, and that that's the yeah. thing. Like they, uh, I, I really hope that they're able to make it. He's probably going to get two to three starts in the next twelve games. Uh, if they really push it, he'll get three. But I, I don't know, man. Like, yeah, it's. It sucks because they can't line up the rotation for the playoffs because they they're right in the thick of it, so they have to yeah keep going with the rotation day in day out. Like which is like really teams tough. like the Phillies, the Phillies are going to start pretty soon setting up resting guys and setting up their rotation for the playoffs. Yeah, yep. Because they're not going to play in the wild card. They're they're going to play in the divisional series. Like they're not going to play in the wild card round. They're going to play in the divisional series. Like yeah, so they can afford to like. Rest, rest guys. Let like, me ask you something about that then. Uh, do you feel the same way about like, okay, so you've got Baltimore and the Yankees that are kind of in the thick of things as well. Uh, they don't have an option. I don't think either one of them to be able to rest rest and set no. up their rotation because the they're literally neck and neck trying to win that division. Uh, yeah. It's going to be I, tough. I, yeah. Cleveland might be the only team who might have a shot at that, but like, that's not even a guarantee they win the division. I know they're five up with 10 to play, but like anything can happen. Weirder things have happened. Yeah, like, definitely. Um, and as you mentioned, Chris sale, right? Like he's just had an incredible year. It's been, um, what he's doing is quite rare. I was reading a nice article on ESPN about him. Um, and the amount of guys that have come back from, from injury to be able to pitch as well as he's pitched this year. Um, I, I think it's yeah. just, and, and they were saying, are like honestly this year he's pitched himself into the Hall of Fame, which uh, I don't well, know about that. Hold on, so I I was doubtful about that as well. But if you look at his numbers through two hundred games, there's a lot of a lot of guys that he's better than. His numbers are better than through two hundred games that are Hall of Famers right now. It's an interesting read. I'll I'll send it over to you. I know you'll read it in two okay. minutes. Uh, it's, you'll speed read know. through it and you'll be like, oh yeah, okay. I got everything on that. But, uh, anyhow, or, I, or you're going to get like a six paragraph. Yep. Like, I think this is bullshit. Yep. That yeah. that's exactly yeah. what could happen. Um, also, uh, cause we also know, uh, how to think critically and don't believe everything that's, that's written by them. So, uh, I just want, I, I went through and did some digging on old episodes and I, I dug something up from earlier this year, something from your past. Uh, and we went through the preseason predictions back in March sure. and we had Baltimore at Atlanta with Atlanta winning. Um, I, did we both have that? 
Yeah, I think we did. Oh, okay. I, I just was curious how you're feeling about that now. Like, I'm going to ride with my boys until the end, even if that end is after uh, game 162. But uh, I just, I'm curious how you're feeling about that now. And if there's anything you want to pivot on, I won't judge. But uh, no, um, I mean, Baltimore's in a weird free fall right now. Like, they, the like, every time the Yankees kind of like, the Yankees lately have been doing this thing where they like, re, like, mess around against inferior teams like a few weeks back like they got swept by the nationals and you're like what hmm. but like in that same time span like baltimore got swept as well so like baltimore is just like effins on the il right now like it just it's didn't not he good. just come back to yeah yep um Ooh. yeah so to be honest with you i i like both teams are probably gonna make the playoffs so that's cool but it's that, yeah, I don't know. Could we be looking Nationals, at another Houston team in the World Series? God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> oh, you're so pissed. It's... God damn it. I don't want this. this uh, and their team, is, their team has been so bad this year. But like, yeah, but they've just literally been the bottom of the rust bucket, but they figured it out. Like, and then, then passing Seattle got their manager fired. Like, you know, yeah, it, it was yeah. that was it. That was like the last straw. That was like, oh no, Houston caught us, fired, gone. I would like. Can I just at least uh, like make a plea real quick? Yeah. Can if, if you're facing the Houston Astros, you don't have to pitch to Jordan Alvarez. Like, no. You don't have to pitch to him. Just walk him. Same way just you don't have him. to pitch to Aaron Judge. Well, Aaron Judge has been kind of on a cold streak. Well, yeah, he was. The Red Sox bullpen fixed that for him. So you're welcome. (laughs) With a grand slam, if I'm not if I'm not wrong, right? Yeah, sure was. He's cold. Let's do it. 15 games since he's hit a homer. We got this. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) So much for that Paw Patrol curse. Don't worry, I I got this, Coach. (laughs) Yeah. Damn it. Oh man. Yeah, too funny. It's it's going to be awesome to see the way it shakes out. And I know next week when we have our show, we'll be able to go through uh, and kind of, you know, talk because there's going to be, what, four games left at that point? Uh, yeah, it'll be the last, like, weekend, really big weekend series. Yeah, and it's, whoo, yeah. man, then it's playoff baseball time. So, uh, <laughs> going to be a lot of fun for that. But uh, anything else you wanted to mention about baseball before we move on here? Uh, fuck the Astros. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, really hope that really hope that the Tigers uh get in. I really do. I just yeah. want to see your dad happy. I yeah. want your dad to be able to enjoy playoff baseball like the rest of us. I want him to see a few more playoffs in, in his lifetime too. That would be yeah. kind of nice. So uh yeah. and he's really sucked by the team this year. It's been very impressive. So he's I he, he keeps telling me there's a lot of good talent on that team. They got some good players. So uh, and it looks like Scooball just, I know we didn't mention him, but he's likely going to win the Cy Young unless something crazy happens. But, um, yeah. uh, all right. So moving into the NFL, tons of NFL storylines. Uh, uh, let's start with like this one, because this just blows my mind after watching it. I was sitting here watching uh, Red Zone on Sunday night. Like, I cannot believe what's happening. And by the way, it was probably the best week to watch Red Zone. Because there, oh, were, yeah. there was, what, eight games on the early slate? It was unbelievable watching that. It was so much fun. So, um, Really seven because I think they showed, like, one play of the Carolina game. That yeah, 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 yeah. That doesn't <laughs> – yeah, that's a rough situation there. Um, but I, I think the biggest storyline for me is the bad teams, or so we thought, right, the bad teams beating the good ones. Uh, the Saints absolutely – crushing Dallas. I mean, that was just, they beat them, stole their lunch money and their girlfriends. Like, I, I don't even know, man. Like <laughs> that, that was, they beat them. And I, I looked at the box score. They beat them in every single quarter. There oh, wasn't yeah. one quarter where Dallas was like, Oh, making a comeback and stuff like Dallas had that uh, Dallas Dak had that big throw to, um, to CD lamb where I was like, all right, they're going to get back in this maybe. And, it just didn't formulate. It didn't happen. Uh, I don't put that on them, but listen, I don't want to talk too much about that um, because I know we're going to talk about them a little yeah. bit later. Uh, but 
I just wanted to know. I got to ask you a question. This comes from the bottom of my heart. Him. I know what you're going to ask me. I How know. are you feeling about Captain Checkdown? Is he your captain or what? I, <laughs> I think I sent you a text at some point where I was like, man, David Carr is 2-0. and What league are we watching these yeah. days? Uh, well, also, Derek, though, David was never 2-0. Yeah, no, yeah, I never. Yeah, I yeah. see. Uh, this is how much I don't respect him. Yeah. I can't his brother all the time. Yeah, so, yeah, so I, I was kind of shocked. I'm like, oh man, the Saints, who I thought were not going to be great this year, um, now just went in and beat the crap out of what we thought was a pretty good team. Well, what's you know what the wild stat is is the the Saints have had 15 offensive possessions this year. Yeah, they've scored on every one of them. Yeah, they're and they're being compared right now to your former New England Patriots uh, because of the start that they're off to. They, they scored 49 in week one. They scored 44 in week two. Uh, all right. First of all, week one, they played Carolina. Yeah, Again, but... Your dad playing football could score 40 on them. Yeah, I, th- I mean, maybe. Um, but yeah, it just, I mean, good things going for the Saints right now. And it's weird because it, apparently the more you hate your players or appear that you hate the players, the better they play. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just awesome. Shahid looks like a dude. He really does. Olave made an amazing catch near the goal line that was almost a touchdown. Kamara just looks like vintage Kamara that has more energy than the previous one. Uh, so the, that Saints game was the Fox game of the week at um, at one p.m. So it was it was on a lot, and so like I watched a good amount of it. Just and Carr just looks like a different quarterback. Like I don't. This isn't the this guy. This version that I'm watching, like he's throwing, he's slinging it down the field. He's not fighting his linemen. No, um, <laughs> it's and then he he hits. He hits the entire Cowboys team after he scores a touchdown with a thriller dance. Yeah, how like, awesome how was mad, that? How, like that's that's gotta be that's gonna hurt so much. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, yeah, that's that's real rough. You're, you're right. He does look different this year. They they address some things on the offensive line in in the off season. Now it's two games, so I, I don't, agree. I don't want to overreact uh, because things can happen. Things can come down to earth. Uh, and all it takes is is one game for that to happen, and things can change. Um, They're playing the Eagles this week, so I think that'll be a really good test. Uh, I think it will be too, because uh, I, I we'll talk about Dallas later, but I think the Eagles are going to be a good test for him this week. Yeah. Um, I agree. Next, moving forward, we got the Loveless Packers beating the bejesus out of the Colts. Um, and again, the score yeah, doesn't indicate there, just how brutal that game was for Indy. Well, to, to to say how brutal it was is an understatement because as a team, Green Bay ran for 261 yards. Yeah. They, it, most of them were in the first half. I mean, DeForest Buckner gets hurt. I, I understand that on, on Indy Z. Sure. That's, that's a big blow to them. Uh, but Josh Jacobs, it was like, dude, it reminded me a few years ago. I don't know if you remember when they played Jacksonville. Uh, Indy, this was like, I don't know, going back maybe eight, nine years, Manning was still there. And, uh, I think it was on their Super Bowl run. Uh, Mm. they had played Tennessee. They got ran over by Derrick Henry. Then they played Jacksonville. And I remember Maurice Jones drew on the sideline, just saying like, just keep running it. They were Jacksonville was ripping off gains of like 11, 15, 17, 13, like just every single play like they just couldn't stop the run there was no point to throw the ball they just i think that jacksonville ran the ball 45 times that game it was insane Um, yeah that's what it felt like in this game josh jacobs looks good and i i I really am a fan of him but the colts just couldn't get it going like ar looked real bad really bad not just like oh yeah kind of bad this was real rough I just, I don't know what you do to fix that. It just, you got to figure out how to be able to stop the run or teams are just going to continue to run the ball on you. Well, I think what was like weird with Richardson is like, you know, week one, he makes these insane throws, but then like he misses a lot of really easy ones. Mm -hmm. And like, this was, and again, this is the thing that was the knock on him coming out of college was that he like, 
he has all this athletic ability, but he's not super accurate. Uh, it's going to take yeah, him time so, too, man. It, it is. I, I just, yeah. I don't understand. Like you knew Malik Willis was going to be the quarterback that you're playing against. Why don't you put every guy in the box? Make him throw yeah. the ball. Like stop the run, sell out to, to, to stop the run, make him throw the ball. Yeah, you know, I, I, you know what? Let's can we just give Matt Lafleur Coach of the Year already because he made Malik Willis look like a real quarterback. Yeah, just give him the award already. Which like, no, what are we doing for the rest of the season? Yeah, no coach has been able to do that so far. No, so, um, uh, and also uh, the fun part of that game, uh, Josh Myers throwing up on the ball before he snapped it. Did wait, you see this? No. So there was like a third and ten, and he threw. <laughs> <laughs> he throws it on the ball because he I don't know what happened. And then like there's no time left, so he has to snap it. And Willis, like, he like gets the ball and it's obviously like covered in vomit. And, like <laughs> he just like takes off running because he's not gonna throw that. Yeah, I didn't and see he, that. He, oh yeah. man, that is great. And yeah. by the way, there's two Josh Myers in the league. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, look at that. Yeah. What a day. Yeah, but like LaFleur didn't know what happened, so like he like he after he like goes over to Malik Willis is like, Hey man, like what happened there? And he's like, Oh yeah. The center, uh, he's like, Myers threw up on the ball. And he's like, what? <laughs> and then like, Myers <laughs> like, yeah, no, I did. And, uh, he's like, all right. Oh Next man. Time, call time out. Yeah. That uh, is, <laughs> that is too damn funny, man. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. yeah, they, yeah they, so your Colts lost to a guy who threw up on the ball. Yeah. They, they got to get things figured out there. I, I don't know what's going to happen and how they're going to do it, but they got to get it figured out. Um, yeah. N- another team that that seems like is in, in free fall. Uh, the Vikings beat the 49ers and like this kind of threw me uh, like <laughs> just because I didn't expect it. First of all, that J- JJ touchdown was ridiculous. Yo, shout out to the ref that kept up with him. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Finally, shout someone says it. Guy. Someone <laughs> says it, dude. Like, did you yeah. see that guy booking it? That guy was Hauling. Yeah, I was shocked. I'm like, yo, he is really hauling it. Like it was it was funny. I didn't hear anyone mention that. That was so cool, man. Uh really interesting. Good to see Sam Darnold look like a dude. And everyone said, like, oh, he's coming back down to earth this week. You know, he's playing the 49ers. They won that game. Yeah. They won that game. Uh, when is the league gonna start respecting Sam Darnold? How many more wins is he going to rattle off? Have to rattle off before people are like, "Oh!" And it looks like don't 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 look too quick, but it looks like the Vikings are taking the approach that they are here to win now. Yeah, yeah. I well, I I remember the text that I sent you late late my time Sunday night where I was like, "Carr, Darnold, and Fields are two and zero, and Lamar and Burrow are zero and two. What league is this?" Yeah. <laughs> it's true man it's yeah true. but no they you know and i thought really them missing hawkinson was like was gonna be big for them but like they're they're just kind of figuring out a way to win and like darnold's being put in like the right positions he's making the right plays in that 49ers defense like that's a legit defense that he he kind of smacked in the mouth a little bit yeah i mean there was he wasn't perfect no made some but mistakes he did, yeah but he capitalized he, on it he didn't cost he didn't cost his team. Whereas that was always kind of the knock on Sam Darnold is he always cost you. He'll cost you. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh He also sees ghosts. He also sees ghosts. Yeah, he does. He does. And I don't know how you I don't know how you fix that, dude. I, I really don't. Um that's something that's gonna be very difficult for, for him to fix. Uh then we move on, right? The Raiders beat the Ravens, which wow, like I did not expect that. Like for a few things, I didn't expect. I didn't expect them to win. I didn't expect Gardner Minshew. Uh, okay, let's back up. Week one, the Ravens get beat by the Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes throws for what, like two hundred and fifty yards, something like that. Yeah. And you know, I I didn't expect the the Ravens to win that, but it was very close, kind of heartbreaking right at the end. I think there were multiple things throughout the game that lost them the game, but. Of course, the the toe being out of bounds is the big one that they're like, oh, this is what cost us. So, you know, they they come, uh, you know, playing the Raiders and stuff, and then 
Gardner Minshew throws for what 240 yards, 250 yards against them, more than that, yeah. maybe. And uh, I think it was actually 260. And I'm just sitting there thinking, like, okay, at what point, at what point is it the defense being a problem now? Because this isn't the Chiefs, this is the Raiders that are doing this. Devontae Adams, yeah. they didn't have an answer for. No, I, I you know, it, for me, I just, I don't get it, man. Uh, like Gardner Minshew's not a, not a hall of fame quarterback. Uh, he's, he, not? he's serviceable, but, and I mean, hall of fame when it comes yeah. to mullets, but n- probably not the NFL. Yeah. Uh, and mustaches. But were you like, I know like the Raiders just have this thing about them where they're, they're back to playing gritty football. And when you see like Max Crosby, just getting after it, man, like, uh, we're I, I make sure you tell ask me about him later because I want to bring him up when we're talking about the Cowboys and and Micah Parsons, um. But th- this team just you know they played their pants off and and ended up beating the Ravens and they beat a good football team that day. I don't think the Raiders are back. I I just want to say that like yeah. because the Raiders can't run the ball. That's they the can't. Thing. They did they, a really bad job of being able to run. Yeah. They ran for 27 yards as a team. Very good. Um, 1.2 yards a carry, something like that? Just about, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that being said, like, Vegas scored what, like, 13 points? Uh, yeah. Yeah, they scored, like, 13 points in the last nine minutes of the fourth. Like, that's just, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, what are you doing? Like, And again, yeah, so know. the Ravens I, ran Derrick Henry in the fourth quarter, right? Uh, I mean, Derrick Henry had 18 carries. So. Uh, did did they run him a lot in the fourth quarter, though? Probably not. Nope. No. No. Nope. No. Nope. I don't know what's going to change that, where they decide like to really put the game away using him, because like he's the he's the battering ram you need to use at the end of the game. Um, uh, again, the thing yeah. the thing is this: like, if you just look look at the stats of the game, you're like, okay, the Minshew was sacked five times. <laughs> Baltimore ran for 150 yards. Yeah. You win that game. You win that game by like 20. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and they lost. At least by two scores. Yeah. At least. Especially yeah. when you tell me that, that you held them to 27 yards rushing. I, yeah. I don't know. Um, Really tough. Uh, but there were some other games that were a bit surprising too. I know uh, we had mentioned this before we hopped on, uh, just about the Bucks beating the Lions. Like I, I wasn't particularly super surprised by this because I think the Bucks, you know, Baker Mayfield can go out there. They they were in the playoffs last year, man. They won a playoff game. They're like this team knows how to get up. They've got a good offensive line. They play fairly well on defense. I was just shocked they won, considering they lost three defensive backs in Week One. To injury, so um, like, I think for them, I wasn't as shocked only because like this was a revenge game for them mm-hmm. because Detroit knocked them out of the playoffs last year and, and it was really close. So I I've got to imagine they saw the schedule and they had this game circled. Yeah, this was a get up game for them. Like, <laughs> Godwin Baker looks real. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Baker like did what he had to do. He you know what I mean? Like he ate a lot of sacks. But those were all from pretty much Aiden Hutchinson for mm-hmm. the record. So like, <laughs> you take that out of the equation, he's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, they they did just enough to win, and Detroit again. This is the second week in a row where they're just kind of letting teams hang around. Yeah, and this the, time it like came back and bit them. The penalty and... at the end of the first half was crushing, and I know Dan yeah. Campbell takes responsibility for that, but. Is it really him? Well, I, I think that is him because, like, if you're a team that's penalized a lot, that means you're not you're not disciplined as a team, mm-hmm. and that falls on coaching. Yeah, it just I don't know. It, again, I, I like the I like his approach. I like the way he coaches all of that stuff. I just, um, you know that that team's got some interesting paths going forward. We'll we'll, we'll catch up on some of the injuries in a second here, but uh, the Cardinals beating the pants off the Rams. I mean, th- this coincides perfectly with the breakout of Marvin Harrison Jr. who just like all of a sudden yeah. I turn on and I'm like, "Wait, what happened?" Well, uh, oh, again? Oh. Oh, and he did it all in the first quarter too. Yeah. Yeah. 
He could have lit. I think he literally changed into street clothes after that, um, because he's like, guys, I'm I'm done, I'm done now. Uh, but yeah. what a freak. Seriously, um, the Rams are just really banged up too. Cooper yeah, cop now hurt like that's yeah that's this, dude and, it, like, and it's not good. We got to talk about that when we get to the injuries and stuff because that's a, a big thing that needs to be mentioned. Um, yeah, uh, the but ba- Kyler looks good. Yeah, Kyler is just he's looking like a stud. James Conner looks really good too. Uh, yeah. They just they they've got a pretty good squad there, and Gannon is he's getting those boys up to play, man. You look at that division, it's up for grabs right now. It's not. The Rams are banged up. Yes, Seattle's up top, but don't tell me Arizona's not coming in. They know that they could hang with Buffalo. They let that one get away. Uh, But they beat a a decent Rams team, right? This is a team that's gotten the best of them many times over the last few years. So, um, Uh, Date for you to, like, keep in mind. mm -hmm. October 25th, 2024. Keep that in mind. And I tell you this date. Because that's when the new Call of Duty comes out. And we'll see how Murray is out. Oh, man. Man. Well, it depends. If he's playing at an MVP level, great. If he's injured, then he's playing it. <laughs> oh, I don't think that matters. I think yeah. he's playing at an MVP L- level. That's... Listen, it's in his contract, bro. He can't. Yeah. So, uh, anyhow, uh, the Bengals at the Chiefs. Um, this was a closer than both of us thought. Um, I, and I'm yeah. not, listen, I know Chase gets the 15 yarder there. I understand why he was upset. Uh, but it, he was in the wrong though, because it wasn't actually a hip drop tackle. Yeah. It was close enough that he thought it was. And it's tough. Sure. It's tough when you're going through it. It's tough to be objective when it happens to you. Uh, and I think. He, I don't think he handled it the right way. I think it could have been more appropriate. Joe Burrow rushed in there and was like, "Dude, get out of here now." Joe Burrow like pushed him, gave back. him a shove that I was when I, was I like, oh man. yeah, I, I was like, "Oh man, he's he's doing his thing." But um, I think me personally, this game confirmed a lot for the Bengals uh, because they know they can hang with this team. Now maybe it's just they're familiar with the Chiefs and they know what they're going to do and they know how to be able to match up against them. Uh, but I thought this game should have been really lopsided, and it was not. Um, they made Mahomes look human. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's some big things with the Chiefs going on now, right? And and uh, this is a, a tale of two teams because one is the re- reigning Super Bowl champs. The other are now 0-2. But yeah. Pacheco now is hitting IR. Yeah. Um, and it looks like he's going to be on IR for a while. For a like, long that, time, yeah. That injury was great. Gross. Yeah, like there's. They, they replayed it on the broadcast, and man, yeah. They... When they're, I mean, and they have Steele behind him, uh, Samaj P. Ryan. They're, they're bringing Kareem Hunt in for a visit today, uh, or I guess it will be yesterday. Uh, but um, they're trying to figure things out on that end. Could you imagine if Hunt comes back and just? I mean, I, I think he, I think he still could do it. Um, yeah, but. Are you more worried if you're the Chiefs or or the Bengals right now? Um, I'm a little worried if I'm the Bengals because this is two games in a row that you've shown that you can't close games. Mm-hmm. That seems to be kind of be an issue. That being said, their next four are such cakewalk games that like they could be four and two after this, and like we'll figure it out then. But like, yeah. Chase is um, gonna eat the next month. Uh, I I, I, so. I really hope so too, man. I hope so because like he kind of hasn't done shit in two games. And, yeah, like... he's done a little bit, but not much. It, it just it. I think it also proves the point. You need to have a solid number two. Missing T Higgins there, like that's really tough. He's getting yeah. double teamed. They're chipping him. Like it's it's tough, man. It really is when you're that dude and they just focus on you and try to take you out of it. It's it's really difficult when, to do that. When Mike Gusecki is your leading receiver, yeah. that's not good. Yeah, that's that's, that's not rough. good. No offense to him. Like he's he's going out there balling out, but like still. Not yeah. Uh, uh and I know I sent you an angry text real quick about that penalty. I've since gone back and like rewatched it a couple of times. The guy was there early. Like he like if he had and that's that falls on the Bengals. Yeah. For playing kind of weird defense and letting Rice be that open. On yeah. A, on a fourth and long. Yeah, that's it is kind of tough. Um, I I want to watch it again from a few different angles just because I, 
I don't know. I, I find myself going back and forth on it as well. Uh, and I, I want to, I want another view at it before I make up my mind on it. Um, I think I now know how Patriot fan, like people felt like when the Patriots were on their run of like just getting all the calls because I was just living. I was like, are you fucking kidding me again? Yeah. Again. Yeah. But like the more I've watched them, I'm like, Oh no, that's actually past interference. Like maybe just don't let Rasheed Rice that open on fourth and a million. This is the problem too, is that like, I, I should have watched it on my own before going to X to see because like that's just a cesspool of like that is a, yeah. oh man people are like give, give me a break the reigning champs they can't win a game without the refs and it, it's like it's super funny to, to read some of the stuff there the comments is you know what we live for but yeah um, but like the Chiefs after two games already like they're kind of they're getting the, they're getting the calls and they're getting the like yeah. Like, things are bouncing their way. And, like, if you're going to, like, make another playoff run, like, you got to have things bounce your way. And yeah. Like, that's... The and thing we'll is, see how they handle without the Pacheco. The, with the Pacheco. Injury. Yeah, the, the thing that people forget is, yeah, maybe they're getting the calls there, and those are helping, but they're also in position to get those calls. You know, like, it's not like they're down by two touchdowns and they get the pass interference call, and then all of a sudden the game's tied. That's not really yeah. the way it is. Like, it's... You know, they're, they're the game's tied or they're winning the game, whatever it is, it's very close. So they're scheduled. The Chiefs' schedule, too, I think it's gonna be really telling the next like five, five games. Mm-hmm. They got Atlanta, they're at Atlanta at the Chargers, they're playing the Saints, the Niners, and then the Raiders. Like, in the Raiders, they weirdly struggle with for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah. It's kind of like the Bengals. Yeah, so it's like, like 13 12, and it's like they lose, and you're, you're kind of heading their next stretching. month their next month of games like i think it's gonna be really telling for them and then they got the bucks after that as well like that's especially if they can't run the ball um yeah they're good they they play a tough schedule this year so we'll see well speaking of the falcons they ended up uh beating the eagles and they they, yeah they stunned philly in dramatic fashion and i just i wanted to know your thoughts on this game i need to go back and rewatch it as well uh just because i feel like there was a lot of plays in there that I didn't think it was going to be Atlanta kind of orchestrating that drive to be able to win. Um, and I want to go back and re- uh, I want to go back and rewatch that to, to kind of see how that formulated. Um, because I, I don't think it was necessarily a breakdown by Philly as much as it was like us seeing Kirk Cousins do kind of what he's done before. Uh, maybe yeah. not last year because he was hurt, but the year before that, dude, they won a lot of close games in the fourth quarter with Kirk Cousins there. Uh, yeah. Cuckins there. Uh, yeah, correct. So, uh, I just, I was curious your thoughts on that. Obviously, A.J. Brown's not there. Um, Though, it really kind of boils down to one play. Uh, Saquon, I think it was like third and four, and they throw, like, Saquon runs like this little slant out of the backfield. And he's wide open, mm-hmm. and Hertz puts it right on the money to him, and he drops it. Yeah, that was. And they have to settle for a field goal instead of a game clinching first down, and that left the door open. And like I was, so like I was watching the Manning cast too, and Matt Ryan was the guest in the fourth quarter, <laughs> and like <laughs> the look on it, like all three of their faces, just the look of how do you drop that? Yeah, like, yeah, and especially you know, like all of them had pretty decent cast uh, pass catching backs out of the backfield um yeah. what when they played so it's but but they understand the pain that you feel when that ball gets dropped uh and that drive to only 65 seconds it took cousins like he yeah he was a machine yeah he's uh, looked drastically different from week 1 very, yeah. very very different so um just real quick I, I wanted to go through these uh who do you think the best 0-2 team is we've got the Ravens the Bengals Jags Titans Colts all three from <laughs> AFC South uh, yeah uh Broncos Giants Panthers and Rams please say the Panthers <laughs> yeah <laughs> I you know I weirdly and my my immediate reaction is to tell you the Bengals mm-hmm because I, I think, like, they're going to be fine. Uh, yeah, I think they're going to be fine because I, I think they have a schedule that's easy enough where, like, because they play they they were finished last last year, like, they get 
they get a pretty easy schedule. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Um, But also weirdly the Jags, like if you, like I've watched a bunch of their first two games and they, the score isn't indicative of like how they're playing. Like they, they're like kind of figuring it out. They just like, they just shoot themselves in the foot. Many times. Like, yep. God damn it. Like, mm-hmm. it's just frustrating to watch. It is really. Um, I'm going to go Bengals on that just because, you know, not only did I pick them for the Super Bowl, but like, yeah. I really, I really think if someone's going to find a way out of that, I feel like Joe Burrow will. Uh, he can throw his way back into contention where I don't feel the same about Lamar. Uh, I was kind of leaning towards the Ravens, but I feel like there's some weird stuff going on there. And I just, the Titans feel to me very much like the Raiders do a lot of talent on that team, but they're just a quarterback away. Yeah, Will Levis keeps making dumb plays. Yeah. He makes one dumb play a week that you're uh, like, I'll, what are we doing? I'll be honest, like some of the plays I'm seeing him make, I'm just break like bursting out laughing where my wife comes in and she's like what's going on and i'm like i can't even describe this this was yeah so foolish i can't but he had a he had a fumble the jets game that i've never seen yeah, before. yeah 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 it was it was awful awful uh good thing Rabel's not coaching this team because he would have had an annual oh he would have tackled him on the field he would have killed somebody yeah absolutely um <laughs> So let me ask you, uh, best 2-0 and o team. We've got the Chiefs, Bills, Steelers, Texans, Chargers, Vikings, Saints, Bucks, or the Seahawks. I, I'm i only going to say this because I, I know I picked them and it should be the Texans, but like Kansas City, man, they just keep finding ways to win and yeah. they're the champs. Like, I also expected the, the Texans to win much by much more against the Bears, and I know the Bears have a good defense. Uh, but I wonder if that, that's going to be the story of the Bears this year, kind of like the Rex Grossman Bears, where the defense was really good and the offense is just kind of that mad. Texans game. The score doesn't tell the story of that game, though, because I watched that game from start to finish. Mm-hmm. Caleb Williams was just running for his life. <laughs> like that Texans, D'Amico Ryan's was just like, how many times can we legally blitz Caleb Williams? Let's just keep doing that. And like. Oh, we talked about that the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Singletary makes an insane interception on Caleb. Like that de- like I, I know Stroud's kind of like still trying to figure it out. And he and Nico Collins though have a thing, and that can't be stopped right now. Yeah. And Nico Collins is is just a dude that's just fast and running over people. Yeah, he's so, a man. Um he's a real so man. I, and I know Stroud will figure it out, but like Houston's defense. Right now, until they figure it out completely, can, Houston's defense can just carry him. Yeah. Also, their kicker kept hitting fifty-yard field goals like it was his job. Mm-hmm. Oh man. I'm I'm actually going to go a different route, uh, just because, and not that I I want to pick someone different than the Chiefs too. I'm going to go Bills right now, and and the reason being is, uh, Josh Allen doesn't need to throw for three hundred yards for them to be able to win. Uh, they're figuring yeah, out. They have a running... Yeah, they've got a really good running game with Cook, who, which seems to really be working. They've also like Josh Allen is just impossible to bring down. Like this guy's a refrigerator that runs with like quite good speed, and he's just yeah. v- very physical. He he's got this will to win inside of him. That's like go ahead. I people have doubted me in my whole life. This year's no different. And that's yeah. very powerful when you give someone like that confidence uh, and a reason, like a motive. So, but uh, we'll, we'll see how it ends up working out. Uh, I just think with some of the, the issues going on in that division right now, uh, the Bills, they're looking pretty good. Um, let's talk about some injuries. I don't want to spend too long on this because it, it could get a, a little out of control, but Tua... Uh, with the concussion, like he comes out and says, like, there's no way I'm retiring. Um, he's meeting with okay. the neurologist this week. Like, just kind of curious your thoughts on it. Um, you know, that's ultimately his decision. And I, you know what I mean? Like, he's an adult. Um, but like at some point, like, how, when is it, when is it not worth it anymore? Mm-hmm. Like, the, in the, in the hit that he took, like, dude was out cold. It was unnecessary like, too. Like he, he, I don't see it as Demar Hamlin hit him as much as he yeah. hit Demar Hamlin. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Really tough go. Uh, 
McCaffrey. Like the, I know this one hurts fantasy managers bad because he was like Ooh, the yeah. un, he was the unquestioned number one pick this year. Uh, anyone that in their draft that was like, "Yo, I'm not going him." Uh, please tell me who you are because uh, maybe oh. there was someone that went Bijan instead or CD Lamb or Tyreek Hill. Uh, but uh, I mean, across the board, McCaffrey was the dude. Both of our leagues that you and I are in together, he went first. Went first, if yeah, I'm, yeah. And in, in fact, every single league that I w- that I was in, and the, the five that I'm in this year, he went first in every one. Uh, yeah. So it's just really, really tough because I don't think people expected him to miss week one, and then they definitely didn't expect him to hit IR. Um, but a lot of injuries going around. Uh, Cup, you know, he hits the ankle it, 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 with the the hip drop tackle, and like this has been like a point of contention all throughout the NFL. It's really crept up in the last few weeks, but uh, yeah. it's just it seems dangerous. I hope I don't know how you police that. Uh, I don't either. That's the thing. Like, because it's such a bang bang play every time. Like, yeah. I don't think anybody's trying to do it intentionally. That's the thing. Like, yeah, they were saying, like, I saw Stefania, uh, oh man, what's her last name? I can't think of it. But Stefania going uh, from ESPN going on and, and kind of talking about it and the pressure it puts on the fibula as you go down. Uh, and, yeah. and it basically causes these injuries where your leg breaks because of that. There's so much stress coming from the ankle upwards through the leg that it breaks that bone and and that's why it's so uh not lethal but so catastrophic of an injury um you know this happens on top of the the nakua injury too i mean they are just their offensive line in la too is just crushed it's a mess uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's really really tough um but so those are real tough you got the hamstrings with t higgins aj brown i mean yeah, and these are all Debo. like top picks, man. Debo too. He's he's battling the hamstring as well. Um, Amon Ra with the MCL injury. Oh, like that. He's yeah. tough as nails, man. So if there's a way, like watching him limp, like gave me pain because I yeah. know that like he's taking on such an immense amount of pain to be there and like try to stay on the field. Uh, but there's rumors that it's a possible ACL too. I haven't seen any reports on on it yet to give more clarity on that. Uh, but that would be crushing because he is, I mean, he's a special player to watch. He really is. Uh, and he's the focal point of uh, Detroit's offense, man. Yeah, he really is, man. Like there's no one else they have. That's quite like him uh, at all. Uh, then obviously we mentioned Pacheco before he hits IR. There's some other injuries too. Joe Mixon is, is banged up now too. Like it's, I don't know, man. So, so it looks like the St. Brown injury isn't a long-term injury. Um, they're saying it is, and I don't know if I believe this, but it was a contusion and cramping. Contusion. Yeah. Remember yeah. last year when he uh, tore his, what was it? Oblique off the bone in week three and then played the rest of the season like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's probably like, no, it was a headache. It's like you were limping. Yeah. He's like, yeah, it was yeah. just, it was not. Yeah, it was a hangnail. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Very tough, very tough guy. Awesome to watch, but man, I hope he's okay. Uh, let's move forward. We got Pulser of the Week. Uh, I put Aiden Hutchinson for this, and it's just, I mean, four and a half sacks in a game is nuts. Uh, yeah. I could sense he was getting pissed because they took away a half a sack from him. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but he's just an absolute game wrecker, man. Like, yeah, it's team still lost the game it just it feels bad but baker mayfield was literally running scared that game uh from aiden hutchinson and he just couldn't get away from him it's uh and that's a big man baker mayfield Mayfield found out like the rest of the league that like it's hard to get away from him yeah 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 very tough uh did you have someone different i I, you know, I, I don't have someone, I have a whole unit. Uh, the Houston Texans defense, seven sacks and two interceptions. Yeah. Really solid. Yeah. Really solid. Yeah. And and yeah. there's probably nothing that makes D'Amico Ryan's happier than his defense playing very well. Uh, yeah. That... You could see the look on his face after I think like the sixth one. And he was just like, like, he was just like, yes. Yeah. Like, that's he... my, that's my boys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I he was so he gets so fired up sometimes that you're like, 
I get scared because I'm like, if that guy ever gets mad, like he looks like he could still play. He's young. oh yeah, doesn't he? That's yeah. kind of the crazy <laughs> thing. Like you look at the other young coaches and you're like, all right, McVay's not playing. Uh, no, no Lafleur's not playing. Shanahan's not playing. Demico Ryan's like, yeah, dude, that guy can still. You ball. know, he in practice, he'll get in there to demonstrate something without pads. Oh, you know he will without pads. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, you sit this one out. I got this one. Let me show you how to hit. Yeah. So yeah. it's let me show you how to kill someone. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh man. All right. Well, let's move on. We got our game of the week. Uh, we've got Baltimore at Dallas. Baltimore gets one. Uh, and the over under is forty nine and a half. So. Just a few things real quick. Like Baltimore, listen, they're they're coming to Big D. They're going to try to get their first win of the season. I, I just think it's an uphill battle so far for them with Kansas City and, and Vegas. But um, last year, just looking back, because I had to look this up, they gave up more than 20 points five times last year. They've already done it twice in 2024. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Their pressure is going to start mounting on Zach Orr if he's not able to get this unit to start playing better. Um, and I, I just, I, I got to ask you, what, what do you think they need to do? Uh, if they could go back and hire Mike McDonald again, I think they would. Um, yeah, no, they. I, I think what it is is like teams just aren't afraid of this defense like they were last year. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's a big part of it. And I think, too, like, I think the offense last year really set the defense up well because, mm-hmm. like, the offense was just putting up points at just wi- at will. Yeah. So a lot of times, like, you know, they're up 14 before you know it. So the defense, so the other team has to start passing. And then, like, that's cool because then the defense can just pin their ears back and like, all right, here we go. Yeah, but they had Clowney, Van Noy, all of these dudes. Queen was there too, so they could just do yeah. that. And meanwhile, you got the guys on the backside that can just – Humphrey and all, all of them. Geno Stone was there too. He's not there anymore. And these guys were just able to be able to, to you know, kind of fly around in the back there and chase yeah. these these batted balls and all of that stuff. It just – I don't know. Well, you're, like, you're right. They're not af- No one's afraid of them now. Well, and it's weird, too, because, like, dudes like Kyle Hamilton are getting cooked. And Kyle yeah. Hamilton, I think, is, like, one of the better safeties in the league. If he not definitely the best is. in the league. Yeah. And, like, he's getting cooked, and I'm like, oh. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. you saw it in the Vegas game. Like, they were running right at him. And you're like, oh, okay. I guess we're doing this now. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah, man. I, it's it's wild. Uh and this is this is such a must. I know I said this earlier. This is the must win for both teams. Unfortunately, it really like, is, man. Like, I don't know. I just wish they would utilize Mark Andrews more. And I I know like people are high on likely, but Mark Andrews when they get him going, it sets up like like it just sets up the whole offense. Like if they're when Derrick Henry's on the field, they know they're going to run the ball. When he's not, they know they're going to pass. It's obvious what they're doing with that. I would love to see like a fake to to Henry off the side where Lamar rolls out and then hits Andrews for like a 20 yard gain. That's that's what they need to do. That's how you get teams to be able to respect it. Now, I know they know this, but I just feel like the Ravens last week it was exactly like the Falcons in week 1 where you just they telegraphed their plays. You knew exactly what was coming from them. Yeah, I yeah I agree. It's weird too because a lot of times they'll roll out two tight end sets and you're like, cool, they have Likely and Andrews out there, great with Derrick Henry. They could do any number of things, mm-hmm. and like it weirdly just doesn't work. And I like I don't know why. Yeah, but... like that 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 should work. And you saw a little glimpse of it with the Ravens in Week One against the Chiefs, where like there were times where like and it was early in the game, you know, when they were running Derrick Henry where, like, they would fake the pitch to Henry one way, and then Mm -hmm. Lamar would just take off the other way. And Kansas City couldn't stop that. Yeah, I don't know why they went away from using that. Um, Or at least I didn't see it in the the Vegas game at all. Um, But I don't know, man. And, like, with Dallas, like, it's even more confusing, right? Like, I'm just – I want to just put this out there. I don't think Dallas is a good team. Oh, I don't think so either. Like, I think they're very much the team, the good bad team this year. Yeah, they're gonna beat up on like shit teams. Yeah, they've had a lot of talent in years past, man. 
But like they paid Dak, they paid Lamb, but they're still they didn't add anything. Okay, Eric Kendricks, awesome at linebacker. But yeah. like, where are the offensive linemen that bullied people that we grew up watching them dominate on the offensive line? Oh well, they let Tyron Smith go to the Jets. Uh, they, they let their center end up going. I forget where he went to, but I, I think Seattle. He signed. He signed in Seattle. Yeah. Uh, you know, like where are you going to see them? Like, when are we going to see them bully the line of scrimmage on offense and defense? I just and I, to, I don't and know. To, man. Like they're just they Dallas's defense uh, offense feels really one dimensional. Oh yeah, like they can only like grow. if, if CD Lamb's not open, like they're just they're just kind of fucked. Especially like, without just, Ferguson there. Yeah, yeah, it just yeah, and you're like, and, and the running back situation, like. <laughs> If it was 2018, cool. Dalvin Cook and Zeke Elliott, awesome. But like, it's 2024, man, and it's not good. No, it's not. It's just I mean, not Zeke's good. doing what he's asked, and and I get that and stuff. It's not on him. I don't even put it that much on Dak. But like, he's not getting the time. They're just not putting it together. They're not running the ball effectively, which doesn't set up their passing passing game at all but the big thing for me is the defense man where are the turnovers where's the game wrecker micah parsons like he's got one sack through two games okay i get that like not not terrible production but like where are the plays that alter the game dude when i watch max crosby play he is altering the game He's, with hutchinson yeah they are they are changing the game the way they play tj watt even uh oh god how am I brain farting right now Cleveland uh oh Miles Garrett yeah Miles yeah. Garrett dude like when he's out there making plays like he was against Jacksonville he was changing the game I don't yeah. I don't see that coming from Micah Parsons yet yeah, he wants to sit there and bitch on his podcast about not getting Defensive Player of the Year like okay dude complain about it and stuff but go out this is your chance to really put this team on your back. And right now, it's the defense that sucks. It's not that yeah. Dak can't get it done. It's the defense that's not doing it. Like, you need both units to be able to, to play well. They got a kicker that can make 60-yard field goals on the reg. He's probably got the strongest leg in the NFL. Got a 71-yarder called off. Yeah. yeah did yeah. he really? Yeah, in the Cleveland game, yeah. Ah, I didn't realize that. I yeah. mean... And uh, well, I think, too, with the defense, like, I don't... I know Micah Parsons is supposed to be the game wrecker, but like he can't like he you watch it, he's routinely getting doubled. Like Yeah, I just they gotta figure out ways to scheme him open, man. They they really they do. do. That's yeah. that's what I heard with with like the new DC coming in that like, oh yeah, we're gonna do all this stuff. It looks like worse than before. Yeah. And I think week one was I, I think threw us off the scent because it's Deshaun Watson. So like he made Dallas's defense just look incredible. Yeah. But yeah, like, it just yeah, I I don't know. It it feels like at least with Mike Zimmer like it's we're looking at a team from the 2000 year r- rather than yeah. like a 2024 team where teams are just going to take advantage of all the stuff they're doing. Uh <laughs> It just looks bad, man. Really bad. Yeah. I, I I don't know, man. I I know you said it's a must win for both teams, but who who do you got winning this game? I <laughs> I'm gonna say Baltimore because I just don't trust Dallas <laughs> to beat anybody decent, and I, that's saying that's saying something because Baltimore's zero two. Yeah, but I, I think Baltimore wins this game, and I think it's close. I, I think it's twenty one seventeen. Oh my god! I don't think there's a lot of I don't think there's a lot of points scored because I just think both offenses. Feel stale and vanilla right now. Oh man, I actually have it have it go in the opposite direction for this. So uh you said twenty one seventeen? Yeah. Okay. I actually have Baltimore winning too, but I have them winning thirty one fourteen. Um I think they are going to absolutely light it up. I think they are gonna run the ball down Dallas's throat. And I really think like Dallas has shown that they can't handle it when a team runs the ball. I feel like we're gonna get back on the no. Derrick Henry train. Jerry Jones is going to get a front row seat to what they missed out on when they did not sign Derrick Henry in the off season. And I don't know if it make any difference for them at this point in Dallas. I, I really don't, but I don't think so either, but he's going to be able to sit in that nice cozy suite of his and watch Derrick Henry run all over them. And I, I'll make another bold prediction. Okay. 
don't be surprised if Baltimore runs for over 300 yards in this game. Ooh. Damn. I think Lamar is going to light it up too. And I, that requires that now that requires Der- them to give Derrick Henry the ball more than 18 times a game. Yeah. I, I think I don't I think honestly if he gets the ball 25 times a game, he we we're looking at 170 180 minimum. There there's a chance okay. there's a chance with how bad this defense is, there is a chance he could go for drop 200 on him. And I I don't know, man. Lamar like And you're tr- you're trusting Baltimore's offensive line enough for that? I I don't think it's going to matter. I I really don't. Okay. Uh, I I really don't. That's how rough I think it is for Dallas right now. I, Jesus, yeah. I I, I just think they're going to get run over and it's going to be real bad. So, yeah. I don't know. We'll we'll see we'll see what ends up happening, but uh anything else you wanted to mention on that before we wrap up here no i i think with dallas though this year i think that you know how like miami last year i they were like the team i never trusted in a big game yeah that's kind of how i already feel about dallas after two games yeah, I, I just don't trust them in big I, games. I honestly don't think they make the playoffs if they continue playing the way they are no uh, they're gonna have uh you know maybe two wins against the giants this year but i, I don't know even the giants look like they're playing some inspired football with with neighbors and and Jones playing the way they are, so yeah. uh, I I I don't know, man. Like I could, e- there's a there's a path for New York and Washington to beat this Dallas team this year. Um, yeah, it's I mean they shouldn't, right? Dallas has more talent, but I don't know, man. It's not yeah. working out for them right now. They got to get it figured out. It's already a wonky year this year. More it definitely is, in. man. Um, so uh. Before we move forward, I want to ask you one thing. Sure. I want you to give me just a quick pick. Do you think do you think Kansas City beats Atlanta this week? Yes. Yes, because this game's in on the turf. So I, I think that like Worthy and Rasheed Rice are just gonna go nuts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I actually I think Kansas City's gonna win this week. I think it could be very close, and I'll make another bold prediction. Kirk Cousins drives them down at the end of the uh, Kirk Cousins uh, drives them down at the end of the game and scores the game winning. T- ah, he drives down at the end of the game and puts them in position to go ahead to win. I think it's a field goal that wins the game, but okay, uh, I I think he can get him there. So it it okay. could be it could be incredible. I think we're gonna see what could what Kansas City will look like without a a very strong running game. So, because yeah. Pacheco is the the spark in in that running game, so I don't know. We'll see. I just was curious. It popped in my head. I'm like, man, I gotta ask yeah. him real quick. So, all right, guys. Uh, trivia we've got. Uh, last week we had the question: Who has who has had the most targets in an NFL game? And maybe I shouldn't have asked this question because right after I asked this question, uh, it seems like Cooper Cup ends up going down the next week. So. We are done asking questions about guys that are on my fantasy football team, but Al's... Oh, let's keep asking. Him. Yeah, Al's is open. So, uh, who has had the most targets in an NFL game ever? It was Brandon Marshall with 28 in one game back in 2009. He went off that day against my Indianapolis Colts for 21 yeah. receptions for 200 yards and two touchdowns. Um, beast. Yeah, it was, it was a beast game. And there are clips of him going through each catch. Kind of rough. Um, the new is trivia Cutler still the quarter... is Cutler still the quarterback in that game? Yeah, because it has to be before Tebow. That's before Tebow. Mm. Yeah, because yeah, because Tebow didn't come in until 2011. So yeah, that had to have been Cutler. Okay, sorry. I... Yeah. Yikes. Back when Denver had decent quarterbacks. Yeah. Well, um. So next question we've got. You want to ask it? Yeah. Um, so it's going to be a baseball-related question. Uh, there is only one Major League Baseball team that has never had a Manager of the Year winner. Who is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so make sure you go ahead and drop that answer below. Get, take a shot at it. Let us know what you think. Uh, we are going to be back next week talking. Uh, bit, we'll bring you some more NFL coverage from week three. Uh, which we are really looking forward to. And we will discuss the last week in Major League Baseball's regular season. So, uh, again, I love you, brother. I love you too, man. Yeah.
It was a good one this week. Good. We will be back it with was. episode 56 next week, guys. Woo. All right. You all take care. Peace, bro.